So one of the biggest things I see that kills people's progress is having all these cheat meals and cheat days. And while I'm not saying there aren't ever times you can just go have fun and not have to worry about it. But the first thing I want you to do is please stop using the word cheat. It is not a good idea. And while it may just be semantics, I'm telling you it's not a good idea because cheating implies you're doing something wrong. I mean, when has cheating ever been a good thing? Cheating on a spouse, cheating on a test, cheating on anything is always a bad thing. And if you use that term on your diet, now you can feel like you've done something wrong. You might feel bad or guilty about it, which just causes things to spiral even more. And it can cause a lot of problems. And this is why you hear me so frequently talk about not looking at foods as good or bad and not banning certain foods, learning how to incorporate them, because if you feel like you can't have a certain food, you just want it even more. If you feel like you shouldn't eat something, when you do inevitably eat it again, you eat as much as humanly possible before your diet starts again tomorrow. And if you feel like you should basically never have any of your favorite foods, you won't be able to stick to it long term and you're going to fail. So the last thing you want is this all or nothing mindset and you need to learn how to include foods you do enjoy in moderation. Because realistically, one of the big reasons you probably feel like you need these days is because you ban certain foods. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, this does not mean there aren't days you can eat more. This doesn't even mean that you can't have days where they're either untracked or you have much more than usual and you're just okay with it. But there are some good strategies you can take I wanna talk about here to be able to eat more food and do things like enjoy weekends more where it can be more of a struggle. You're oftentimes going out to eat more. There's less structure and routine. And I don't want you to feel like you have to basically eat the same amount every single day. One thing you do is allow for higher and lower calorie days. For instance, let's just say say you wanted to average 2,000 calories per day for the week. Well, instead of eating 2,000 calories every single day, all seven days, you could do, for instance, six days of 1,900 calories and one day of 2,500 calories, which would average 2,000 calories. Or you could do something like 1,800 calories five days per week and 2,500 calories two days per week, like on the weekends. And this will keep you at that 2,000 calorie target for the week, but allow you more flexibility to go out and have fun. Where the problem often lies is you may have a goal of 2,000 calories per day and you may do that five days per week, but then you have two days of massive cheats or binges and now you're eating 2,000 calories five days per week, but eating more like 4,000 calories two days per week and now you're averaging more like 2,500, 2,600 calories and this is why you're not seeing progress. Remember, it's not the target calories that count, it's your total consumed calories whether you track them or not, your body's going to. And this is why I do like tracking, especially in a calorie deficit, because then you're accounting for things. It doesn't mean you can't lose weight without tracking. It's just a valuable tool. And if you aren't, it can make it more difficult to eat a bit less during the week and more on the weekends and know how much you're eating and why you are or are not seeing results. All that said, I really wanna stress, I am not saying you can't ever have a meal or a day where you just go have whatever you want and have fun and not worry about it. Certainly can one day is never gonna make or break anything. However, if you're doing this basically every single week and you can't see progress because of it, well then now we have a problem. And if you feel like you absolutely have to have these, oftentimes I find that stems from too restrictive dieting, but even if you're tracking, even if you don't look at foods as good or bad and you allow some moderation, if you get too tied up in all the little tiny things, that can cause you to feel like I just need to let loose. So for instance, a lot of times I see this behavior from people who ask questions like, should I be counting the calories from my BCAAs and my zero calorie sodas and sprays and looking at all these tiny little things that would only mean even just a handful of calories and stressing out about that is just too much and you just can't do it anymore and you feel like you have to let loose. So there's a balance to all this, of course, but the more restrictive you are with your diet, the more of a likelihood there is to have these massive cheats, binges, whatever you wanna call them. And if this keeps happening, you're just not gonna see the results. So at some point, if this is happening to you, you're gonna to have to decide what's more important to you, having these big cheats, meals, or days, or whatever, 
or getting the results you want. Remember, this is not something you're gonna have to do for the rest of your life. Yes, it has to be a lifestyle, but you're not gonna have to be in a fat loss phase forever. And if you do this thing right, you're gonna spend so much more of your life not dieting than you will dieting. So the time for more calories will be coming. You're gonna be able to reverse diet, get those calories back up afterwards. You're gonna be able to enjoy so much more freedom. So don't FOMO into these foods and stuff every single time there's an opportunity. That opportunity will come, but if you're in a calorie deficit, the time is not right for that, at least not very frequently. Now, all that being said, when you do have days like this or even refeeds, you can see the scale spike on you the next day, but you need to understand that likely has nothing to do with body fat and ignoring the scale isn't necessarily a great idea either, especially if you have a poor relationship with the scale and you get your emotions way too connected to that number. And if that is you, then make sure you check out this top video next where I'll talk about some strategies, how you can get over that fear of the scale, create a healthy relationship with it and stop letting it affect your emotions. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see you in that other video.